All right, kids. One more takedown of Christian apologist David Falk, and then I'm moving on, unless he does another response video, at which point we'll have to pants the guy all over again. But I had said in my original video regarding the resurrection of Osiris, I had quoted uh, comparative religion scholar S.G.F. Brandon on the comparisons between Christ and Osiris. And... Captain Falk had this to say. Does Osiris's destination in the netherworld make his resurrection an unworthy comparison to the resurrection of Jesus? Comparative religion scholar S.G.F. Brandon brilliantly addressed this many years ago. A crucial factor in the comparison here is that despite the vivid gospel accounts of the appearances of the resurrected Jesus, he is not related to have resumed his life on earth in contemporary Judea, but to have ascended to heaven, where he was believed to live a supernatural existence. There is, therefore, justification for a phenomenological comparison between the deaths and resurrections of Osiris and Christ. Each is raised to life again by supernatural means after an unjust death, but each is transformed into a new mode of being. That is, neither Osiris nor Christ resume their earthly lives, but pass on to another world, where they each acquire a new status and office, which in each case is that of Savior and Judge of the Dead. SGF Branded is, again, another scholar of comparative religion but not an Egyptologist. And perhaps more importantly, he wrote this book in 1968. So we aren't talking about current scholarship here. Brannon represents the garbage scholarship that no respectable Egyptologist would ever cite in a paper. This just exemplifies why holding a higher degree matters. Without that higher degree, it is difficult to discern good sources from the rubbish. So Brandon's work is rubbish, and no legitimate Egyptologist would ever stoop so low as to agree with that son of a bitch. Well, enter renowned Egyptologist Kara Cooney. Hey David, do you like apples? I want to defend FGF Brandon for a second here and read a quote and tell me if you agree, disagree, what you agree on. Maybe you, maybe you think he's on the money. A crucial factor in the comparison here is that despite the vivid gospel accounts of the appearances of the resurrected Jesus, he is not related to have resumed his life on earth in contemporary Judea, but to have ascended to heaven where he was believed to live a supernatural existence. There is, therefore, justification for a phenomenological comparison between the deaths and resurrections of Osiris and Christ. Each is raised to life again by supernatural means after an unjust death, but each is transformed into a new mode of being, i.e., neither Osiris nor Christ resume their earthly lives, but pass on to another world where they acquire a new status and office in which each case is that of Savior and Judge of the dead. The mm -hmm. ritual identification of the deceased with Osiris is now extended to include his identification with Osiris in terms of his vindication by the divine tribunal of Heliopolis. And so as Osiris has had been judged and proclaimed, I'm going to butcher this, Ma Karu. Ma Haru. Um, Ma mm -hmm. true, true of voice. It means true of voice. And I had justified in brackets here. Mm -hmm. The dead devotee of Osiris vicariously assumed this title, doubtless in the hope that as he participated in the resurrection of Osiris, so would he also share in his post-mortem justification. SGF Brandon, Redemption in Ancient Egypt and Early Christianity, Types of Redemption, redemption Contributions to the Theme and Study of Coherence, held at Jerusalem, 1970. Mm -hmm. I love it. I think he's he's on the money. I don't see any issues with that at all. You need the physicality of the body made into a thing with open eyes and arms and hands, and it it turns you into something that can be physically transformed, worked upon, ritualized. Once you have that, then you go into the afterlife space. And yes, Osiris is a god of the afterlife. He is the ruler, the king of the afterlife. Think of this idea of king, right? Mm -hmm king of the afterlife. And then Jesus physicalizes, comes, his transformation is made manifest through his body, 
And then Thomas sticks his hand into the wound and all of these things are physicalized. Then he transcends into light, into the upper abode and is the judge, is the king of the afterlife. The, the, the similarities to me are, are striking. How do you like those fucking apples?